this month's theme is... Halloween! All month long! Because that's how much we love Halloween! <laughs> Start your day with silly and safe. Start your day with sassy and sage. Sincerely, simply, seriously cereal. Everyone is welcome here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Let's see our review today. Oh, I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Maxwell. And I'm Brienne, one of Maxwell's moms. Welcome to Seriously Serial. Episode number 405. Seriously Serial is made possible by viewers like you. And by Blue Legacy, a volunteer run nonprofit dedicated to bring people together. Find out more at www.seriouslyserial.org. That's right, Spoody. Thanks so much. If you eat your cereal dry, then you're a snacker, like our buddy, Bowler. Oh. Hello! Hey. <laughs> or, if you prefer your cereal with milk, then you are a spooner, like our pal, Spoonie. We also have Seriously Cereal Director. <laughs> Every month we post episodes with a theme. This month's theme is... Halloween! All month long! Because that's how much we love Halloween. <laughs> Today, we will be reviewing Monster Mash Remix. Monster Mash is a pretty classic Halloween cereal, yeah. but this is a remix, and I do love a good remix. Me too. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's get our bowls. Here we are. <laughs> Okay, so Brian, yes. you love music more than anyone else I know. Can you tell us what exactly is a remix? So that's a really good question. Um, so a remix is when you take a song and you take part of the song mm -hmm. and mix it around, or sometimes people will take a part of the song and mix it with a completely different song and make mm -hmm. a new song, and that's considered a remix. Interesting. Yeah. Tom Moulton pioneered the remix with disco music in the 1960s. Hmm. He also invented the idea of a single. Oh, isn't that where like a musician releases one song before they release a full album? Mm -hmm. You got it. Hey. <laughs> Back when Tom was working in music, uh, it mostly just came on vinyl records. Most music is sold digitally nowadays, um, but vinyl records are definitely making a comeback. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> have you ever seen a vinyl record? Do you know anyone who has one, or do you have one? Let's see what our friends have to say. Hi everyone, my name is Cyan Broadhacker, and I do know what a vinyl record is. I don't have one, but I have seen one, and the first time that I ever saw one was when I was in fifth grade, and it was during music class, and my music teacher had one, and he brought it out and played a song for us to hear to show us the difference between music back then and music now. Good day. I am Gregor Fjallrev, joined by special guest Gadsen, who is somewhere within that enclosure. So, question is, right, have I ever seen a vinyl record? Yes, many times. My sister's boyfriend likes to collect them. Um, in regards to when the first time I saw one was, that probably would have been in the record store in Kansas City, was it? I think. I remember they had a cat there. Um, but that was the first sort of dedicated record store that I had seen where they were actually having all the vintage records as not only does my sister's boyfriend like to collect uh, vintage records, but he also likes to acquire instances of vinyl versions of modern albums to be played onto a plug-in-the-wall record player. Um, 
I'm not sure what the big difference is. You know, some people like to say that it sounds better, but I mean, I really don't see how because you know, and I have really good hearing. Like, so if we actually do a uh, little thing, so when they test your hearing, the actual little score gets printed out like this. And there's left and right ear, and then how many hertz the uh, sound they're playing is. And then there's going to be a number printed on each row and column here, like so, which is how many decibels they had to add before you were able to hear the beep. And that's my scores right there. So from 1 to 4,000 hertz, which is pretty good, they didn't have to add any decibels to it and at 500 it was only five decibels which is like a whispering conversation 10 feet away so that's my hearing and frankly I don't see what the difference is so I honestly I think my sister and her, and her boyfriend might just have a slight case of being rather pretentious but that is my story in regards to records Hi, my name is Amber, and I am going to be talking about vinyl records. Um, the question, have I ever seen a vinyl record? Well, yes, actually, I've seen lots of vinyl records. Um, those were actually the things that were available to me to play music when I was little. Um, started out with, we were able to play vinyl records, cassette tapes, and eight tracks. Um, I actually had a television that had a vinyl record player on the top of it and then as I got older I had my own personal vinyl record player um, so that was like the first thing I knew about was vinyl records um, so you know I've seen the progression to more use of cassette tape and then CDs and now digital music um, but my favorite vinyl record, I don't own any vinyl records now, um, but my favorite growing up is we had a vinyl record uh, recording of Gene Autry singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and I really loved that one. Um, but I don't have the steadiest of hands, and I'm always afraid that, uh, I was always afraid that I was going to drop the needle and scratch the record. But, uh, so as soon as I was older and I got a cassette tape player that was attached to a vinyl record player I recorded all of my vinyl records onto cassette tape and that made me a little bit less nervous about playing them but um, I have a friend who lives in Ireland who collects vinyl records and thinks that music is way better on vinyl records so I still periodically get them and send them over to him um, and you know there's still kind of that nostalgia around vinyl records and they're kind of making a comeback. So, um, who knows, maybe I will own one again in the future. Hi there. My name's Mark Miller and we're out here. We're going to be talking about vinyl records in the typical rainy Washington afternoon. And one of the questions that was asked was, did I ever have vinyl records? And I'm going to tell you that when I was growing up in the 50s, our vinyl records could break. They weren't like more bendable. And so when you see, they were like the type you see in the old Three Stooges cartoons where people are beating people over the head with the records and throwing them at them and they're breaking. That's the type of records we had. Of course, then plastics and whatever the material is they use now, the vinyl, you know, got better so now it's more bendable it doesn't break as easy and, and scratch it easy but i want to show you something else too there's actually records made overseas too this was made in japan in 1979 and it's called mariner and it's about a bunch of former gis i got with uh, let me see his name is george murasaki and they had a group the problem was they didn't have immigration clearance to do this because they were U.S. citizens. So we're going to one of the concerts, Japanese immigration come up and arrest them. <laughs> That's what happens when you sometimes in the, in the record industry, when you're not doing it the right thing. But anyways, that's my stories about vinyl records and, and also the fact that at one time they were very easily breakable. Have I ever seen a vinyl record? I'm so old, I remember the days before vinyl records. 
When I was wee, I used to visit my granny for the summer holidays and we were allowed to go into the bedroom and play her old hard 78s. You had to wind up a gramophone to play them. It wasn't really worth playing though because the only things on them were either hymns like the old rugged cross or Shakespearean actors reciting soliloquies. But by the time I was a teenager, things had improved considerably. Then you could buy vinyl long playing records. So at parties, you could stack them all up on a record player, put the lights down low and spend hours kissing and cuddling your boyfriend or girlfriend. You didn't even have to wind it up because they had invented electricity by then. Civilization had advanced considerably. Now, on my 14th birthday, my granny presented me with a guinea. That was an old-fashioned silver coin worth 21 shillings. Actually, she didn't give me a silver coin. She gave me a pound note and a shilling, but it was the principle. It was a fancy and big amount of money. What was I going to spend it on, my parents asked. My eyes lit up. I nipped out the house, hopped on the bus, downtown, came back a few hours later, clutching my own brand new copy of Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band by the Beatles. <laughs> my parents were horrified. How dare I spend Granny's money on that rubbish? Now, fast forward 50 years, and my son came home the other weekend and said, Hey, Dad! Do you get any old vinyl records? I said, eh, probably. Take a look in the attic. You can take anything that you like. He came down an hour later, quivering with reverence and ecstasy, clutching that old tattered copy of Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club banned by the Beatles. Apparently it's not considered to be rubbish anymore. Thank you so much, friends. What did you think? Go over to SeriouslySerial.org and use the mailbox to send us a message. Yeah, we love it. Did you forget oh. about me? We never forget you, Forgamillion. <laughs> a serving size is... There are calories per serving, and each serving has grams of carbohydrates and grams of added sugar. Children should have no more than 12 grams of added sugar each day. And adults should have no more than 24 to 36 grams of added sugar. Thanks, Forkamillion. You're welcome. So, a sweet cereal, but not a super sweet cereal. Yeah, it did have marshmallows, so mm -hmm. I expected about 11 grams of sugar. Yeah. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Spider. Hey, Bowler. Hello, Seriously Serial Team. I wanted to let you know that what you're reviewing today costs... And there are... Servings. Let's figure out how much each serving costs. Divide the price by the number of servings. Ta-da! Math is awesome! Thanks, Bowler. Thank you, too, Spider. Bye! <laughs> An average serving of cereal costs about 35 cents. Mm, so, Monster Mash cereal was a little more than is typical of cereal. Yeah, probably because it's like a special, limited time only kind of a thing. Okay, good point, good point. Yeah. Oh. All right, Spoonie. <laughs> awesome. We're gonna, once again, we're gonna split the serving this time. So, it's so gonna be me, and then, I thought a little, a little less for you since you have a snacker. Yeah. So not quite split, but you get what I mean. And uh, I'll pour the milk, and then, all right. Let's go. Okay. So I noticed that, I believe, 
especially even compared to uh because monster max <laughs> monster max monster mash remix obviously it's based off the the first monster mash series which was all like the monster series together i noticed this time they only have two of the ghost colors the uh uh yeah. carmella crunch which is the new monster it's like a caramel apple flavor i believe and then there's uh the blueberry which is i mean that's I mean, I do like Blueberry, but it is kind of strange that they didn't have all the different colors. It looks like for the other monsters, it's just like the different, uh, marshmallows. But, yeah, it's gonna be Yeah, fun. it's like they picked like a couple of, like a cereal from one, a cereal from another, and then the marshmallows from the other three. It's interesting. Well, okay, I'm def- ooh, I'm getting a very strong caramel taste. Ooh. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm mostly just getting kind of like a general like berry slash fruit kind of a mm. flavor. I don't know. It's interesting. Okay, I'm just, Some I'm, of the pieces are kind of mixed. Yeah, yeah. And they are a weird color. But yeah, you know, actually you're right. I just tried just a spoonful of the blueberry. Yeah, that's more of a like a typical like fruit like yeah. like blueberry flavor. Yeah, that's what I'm getting just from everything. Mm. Mm. You got the green ones though. Uh, Yeah, they definitely have like a very like a molasses like aftertaste type of thing going on. Yeah, I don't know. Like a caramel y molasses y taste. But good actually. They just all kind of taste berry to me. Right. I don't know if it's just because it's mixed in together, it doesn't have the milk to kind of separate it. <clears throat> that's true, that's bad. And it actually, it, it might be like the milk adding like some sort of like creaminess. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. But, yeah, for me, if it's, it, I definitely taste caramel. But I don't taste any apple. So, like, when I see green, I do think it's, it would be yeah. like, you know, green apple. Because, you know, when I think caramel apples, I usually do think of a green apple. You know, the, the, little, the, the little slight tart sourness to contrast with sweetness. So, hmm. that is still kind of throwing me, but it's not bad. It's not bad. <clears throat> and it's interesting too sweet, which is nuts. Because I was a little bit worried about that, but... These cereals in general have always been pretty good in terms of that, uh, like, sweetness balance, so I'm glad to say that the new cereal still delivers there. It's not too sweet. It's, it's a more subtle sweetness. Yeah, it's really nice and crunchy and crispy. Yep. Yeah. Um, but it's not, like, a hard crunch. Mm -hmm. um, it's very airy, you know? Yeah, and it does hold up pretty well in milk. It does, like, the airiness does let it keep a little bit of that crunch, which is nice. It's not like just totally soggy. Yeah, I mean, it also is really easy to pick up. It's not yeah. like too little, which we've run into with a lot of the cereals. Mm -hmm. um, they're just like super awkward to pick up, but this is actually yeah. super easy. Um, I could easily throw it in like a Ziploc bag, take it <laughs> on a hike or a walk. Here's one of those um, multicolored ones now on this side is green and the, side, and the top is blue. <laughs> Oh, bluish gray. It's it's a blueberry color. Yeah, it's it is kind of gray. That's interesting because there's like the bright green and then and the, the purple, milk. right? And then we've got this like in between guy, which I had some lighter ones, but I think I ate them. No like Sorry. flavor in the milk. Let's make sure I don't have a milk mustache. <laughs> <laughs> but <Hmm>. yeah, <clears throat> honestly, <clears throat> it is pretty good, but. You know, I kind of wonder, because I know you're getting mostly, like, fruit flavor, but mm -hmm. it seems like I'm getting, like, two different flavors. Yeah. I wonder if the reason why they didn't include the others is because, like, they thought the flavors wouldn't work with, like, Carmella Crunch, the new one, the green one. Yeah, it's <laughs> interesting. Well, and I'm, I'm curious if that is really the cereal from that cereal. I think Especially, so. well, just saying because a lot of these are, like, the mixed colors. Oh! So it seems like they're oh, all being saying, created at one oh, time. Oh, you're saying so maybe it's, like, ah. Maybe it's just green colored. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Maybe they were just going for, like, they decided to keep it with the blueberry. Because this, mm -hmm. obviously, is the blueberry. I mean, it's very, very clear. Yeah, um, and, I, and I do love blueberry. So I don't know about the green, because I felt like the Carmella <laughs> Crunch had more flavor. Hmm. I, you know, it's 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 yeah. ironic because I feel like from what little I've I've had a little bit of Carmella Crunch, but I feel like this actually might have had a more of a caramel taste than what I had. Yeah, yeah. it was completely gone for me. Yeah. 
I, I mean, don't it's know. Good, but it's I am like, stumped. I think yeah, I need to too. go for a walk. Yeah. Do you mind if I come with? I think I might want to think about this. Not at all. I, yeah. I need to ponder. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back, you guys. All right, Spoonie. Snack on the rest of this. All right. <laughs> our very own haunted house. If you want, you can download the haunted house craft sheet for free from seriouslyserial.org or you can create your own haunted house with me and Spider today. <coughs> Here's the haunted house craft sheet. I love how the house is crooked. <laughs> First, I'm going to draw some spider webs because I love a haunted house with lots of webs. I'll use a crayon so I can color over the webs later on with colorful markers. Starting from the corner of a room, I'll draw three straight lines and then I'll add curved lines. <laughs> the curved lines do look like smiles, spider. <laughs> Let's color our rooms some classic Halloween colors. Orange, green, and purple. one pink room because I love the color pink. We can also color the moon and the pumpkins in the yard. And we can add some stickers. It's a Halloween party. If you can't print the haunted house craft sheet, that's okay. Spider and I will show you how to draw one of your very own crooked little houses. We'll start with a straight line to show the ground. Then we'll add two crooked walls, one straight floor and one straight wall. We'll top that off with three triangles. We can do anything with shapes. I'll draw everything with pencil in case I want to erase anything and start again. But I'm happy with the design now. I'll trace those pencil lines with a black marker. Now I get to decorate another haunted house. Thanks for watching, everyone! Did you know that everyone who works on Seriously Serial is a volunteer? We are! Yeah, yeah very true. And you can go to seriouslyserial.org to support us. Now, because Seriously Serial is safe for kids, YouTube turns off comments when we post episodes online, but we love hearing from you. So, at seriouslyserial.org, use the mailbox to send us a message, and we might read it in a future episode. Seriously Serial airs on YouTube on Saturday morning and also on several public access channels and at seriouslyserial.org. See you next time. Bye.